Well, my friends, now that we have all settled back into our bodies, it is time we resumed our duties in earnest. Let us speak of our plans. Ever since the Emperor's death, it's been one unsettling rumor after another. I have a mind to pay a visit to Garlemald to ascertain the truth of the matter. A prudent endeavor. Tis of the essence that we establish the full extent of the threat, not least if it should prove that Xenos doth indeed orchestrate events from the shadows. In light of which possibility, I shall accompany thee on thy mission. Be assured that thou shalt find me more a help than a hindrance. Thou requirest another to imbue thine ammunition, dost thou not? Assuming that's settled, there's something I've been meaning to look into as well. Welcome back, everyone! Lise! You're fine now, right? No more headaches or keeling over? That's right. We're fighting fit and raring to go. The famous Lise Hext, former scion and hero of the Alamegan resistance. I don't believe we've met. Really? It's so easy to assume that all Archons are acquainted. But then I suppose your fields of expertise are rather different. Grahatir, at your service. I have read much and more about your exploits, Commander. It is a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance. Likewise, the others told me all about you. Do not be so sure. Words scarcely do justice to the vital role he played in our victory in the first. A more dependable comrade one would be hard-pressed to find. Oh, right. I did glance at the report, uh, but I'd be lying if I said I understood half of it. Well, well, that's a lot to take in. Um, just to be clear, this means we're not heading for another calamity, does it? Shorn of their unsundered master's leadership, what Assians remain shall struggle to see their plans to fruition. And though I would ever advise caution, I believe we may rest easy for a time. I'll take that as a yes. Even so, I don't know what to make of this business about Hydaelyn and Zodiac being primals. A difficult truth to bear, yes. But at last we understand the nature of our adversary. And if there are no further calamities, neither will there be rejoinings, meaning Zodiac will never regain his full strength. Even so, as the oldest and mightiest of primals, he remains a force to be feared. Though his is a power born of the desire for salvation, we have seen the havoc it may wreak. And it falls to us to ensure that it is never again brought to bear upon this star. But tell us, Lise, to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit? What do you mean? Isn't seeing my long-lost comrades reason enough? Mm, 
All right, there was one other matter. I have a message from the Alliance. And before you ask, yes, it's about the Empire. So, after Emperor Varus' assassination, it seems his cousin Nerva made a bid for the throne. The trouble is, he wasn't the only one with designs on it, and it didn't take long for a civil war to break out. And it's not just in the provinces. Early reports say huge swathes of the Imperial capital have been reduced to rubble. The Alliance will soon convene in Alamigo to decide on a course of action, and we were hoping you'd come along. Well... As it happens, Uriange and I were just this moment planning a little trip to Garlemol. And we should be grateful for any advice the Alliance can provide on how best to make the most of our visit. To Alamigo, then. Why don't you go on without me? There's something I need to look into. Ah, oh, forgive me. You were just telling us. What is it, if I may ask? I want to find a way to cure the Tempered. Of course. You think it may be possible to adapt the treatment you use to help those corrupted by the Sin Eaters? I'm sorry, a cure for tempering? But that would change everything. Alizé, consider yourself uninvited. Go and find us this cure. I'll do my best. I was hoping you might join me. Don't worry if not, though. I won't hold it against you if you'd rather attend a stuffy meeting. <laughs> I knew you'd say yes. I'll come too. If you don't mind, that is. Mind? I'm sure they would be glad of your company. Pray, enjoy your time together with your hero. My... no, no. That's not... I mean, I, I... I simply thought my knowledge might be of some use. We shall be on our way then. Godspeed.
My friend! After the disappointment of not seeing you in Al Amigo, what good fortune to chance upon you here of all places. As you may have heard, the Allied Nations are making a renewed effort to address the primal problem. To that end have I invited the Chieftain of the Vanu to Ishgard, that we might together plot a course. Since the war with the Empire appears to be nearing its conclusion, I would also like to call upon Estinian's lance. Alas, he is, as ever, a difficult man to find. I am informed he recently paid a visit to the Rising Stones. Should he happen to do so again, be sure to pass on my regards, won't you? But tell me, what business brings you to our fair city this day? A cure for tempering. You never cease to amaze me. Until now, our only hope has been prevention, our every failure irrevocable. But this, this would rewrite the rules of engagement. It could end the cycle of bloodshed. Very well. You shall have all the ceruleum we can provide, and an airship with which to transport it. In this matter, you may count on Ishgard's full support. Who would have thought Ceruleum weighed so much? Serves me right for being stubborn, I suppose. I should have just done what you did and accepted help. Good work, you two. This is all we ask for and more. Quite a lot more now that I look at it. Lord Emmerich, eh? And entirely by chance. Ha! <laughs> Some people have all the luck. We have also succeeded in configuring the terminals, thanks in no small part to our able assistant. <sighs> it's been a while, hero. You seem surprised to see me. Lest you misunderstand, I've no interest in such things as cures for tempering. But if you mean to achieve that which eluded even the storied Allegans, it seemed plain that you would require my expertise. <laughs> and so it proved. Is that not right, Garland? 
For all the effort it took to track you down after your latest disappearing act, you could find the cure for death, and it wouldn't be worth the trouble. <clears throat> that wasn't the only reason I agreed to cooperate. I'm reliably informed that Garland and I are destined to unravel the secrets of travel, not only across dimensions, but through time. Doubtless the lion's share of the credit lies with me. Nine parts to Garland's one. And this research will be a stepping stone to that illustrious achievement. Uh, very well then. I'll do a tenth of the work. Just the part that's beyond you. <laughs> Whatever you say, Garland. By the way... The healing applications of Crystal Foci proved very useful in getting us to where we are now. I must remember to thank Mikoto. Right. If everyone's ready, let's begin. Appears to be in order. Now, we just have to wait for it to find us our magic. Why not take this opportunity to put your feet up? This may take a while. It's overloading. She, she won't last much longer. Uh, we'll have to shut it down. Wait, we're close. So very close. This is going swimmingly. Please, a moment longer. I beg you. There. I was able to memorize the magic before it faded. It still needs to be put to the proof, but I believe we have our cure. It's just as well. She'll never run again. The fault is mine. I'm sorry. Don't be. It may fall short of dimension hopping, but a cure for tempering is not to be sniffed at. This, my friend, is a world-changing discovery. One we're proud to have had a hand in. <clears throat> a few Magitek terminals are a pittance to pay. Thank you. Well, we've done what we can. The rest is up to you. Thank you. 
Apologies for the wait. Gabu, have you been good? Still no change, I'm afraid. He just stands there in silence until we move him. It's all right now. We're going to help you get better. Fancy meeting you here. Alfano, you stole her! I thought you were attending to primal matters. We were, and came here for a meeting on the subject. Certain pirate factions did not deign to attend, however, and it was cancelled. We had resigned ourselves to having wasted a journey when we chanced to espy you. Could it be that there has been progress with the treatment? Using Magitech terminals to formulate the solution. I would never have contemplated such an approach. So this new magic, adapted from memory transference, would be used to purge the subject of their fanatical faith, while Angelo would be responsible for reanimating the ether of their soul. Hmm. Yet I wonder at the practicalities. If one were to reanimate the soul first, it would only serve to exacerbate the tempering. Conversely, a stagnant soul would not respond to the effects of the magic. Would both need to be performed simultaneously? Ah, nothing escapes Master Matoya's inquiring eye. As you say, both must be carried out simultaneously. And thus, I propose to imbue Angelo with the tempering treatment in much the same manner as I did the spirit vessels. By doing so, we also spare Graha the trouble of casting spell after spell. It's really rather efficient. Be that as it may, certain difficulties are unavoidable. The imbuing process will still require no small amount of ether. And, as I can no longer draw upon the Crystal Tower's stores of energy, I will be compelled to rely on those of others. Well, I, for one, would be glad to assist. As would I. Since the resumption of our duties, it has been naught but stuffy meetings, and I have ample ether to spare. Excellent. With your permission, then, let us begin. Yes, this will do. And now, it's my turn. indeed well we seek to go where even the Allegans did not it was never like to be easy the rest is up to you Alize the treatment itself will take time and focus so we will need a quiet room I'm sure our hosts can spare one I will go with her. 
It may be a while before we return, so I would ask for your patience and your faith. We'll bring Gabu back. You see if we don't. Twould seem our part is played. Let us find a place to recuperate while we wait for news. For years, Eorzea has labored to find a solution to the primal problem, without success. Any hope that tempering could be reversed faded long ago. I myself had given it up as impossible. Given up on the tempered and the light corrupted alike. They were problems to be tolerated, or else eliminated, I believed. And to think otherwise was pure naivety, childishness even. But Alizé refused to give up. She struggled and she struggled. And her efforts were rewarded with a way to bring back Halric. And now countless others may no longer be beyond salvation. However much we bicker, I have the greatest respect for my sister. Had I half her stubbornness, nay, her unwillingness to accept the status quo, I would be a far better person, a far better scion. She told you of my graduation thesis. How very embarrassing. Nonetheless, it is comforting and not a little surprising to hear that I'm still capable of impressing my sister. On the rare occasions I'm not annoying her, that is. Alize, are you all right? The treatment. Did it work? Oh, I'm so glad to see you all. Delighted, happy, glad. Gabu! This time, my mind was filled with thoughts of Great Father Titan. But I never forgot about Mother and Father. Always, they were in my heart. Constantly, ever, always. So I tried to focus on their faces. Theirs and yours. Alize's and everyone's. And I found that I could remember. One thing, then another, and another. Your hopes reached Gabu. They helped him to hold on. I'm so proud of you, Gabu. I couldn't have done it without you, Alize. Can you help the others too? 
Kill them. Heal them. Help them. Yes, we can. All of them. <clears throat> Without wishing to dampen the mood, I feel compelled to add certain caveats regarding the viability of the treatment for general use. As you know, reversing the effects of tempering demands a profuse amount of ether. And while Alize was able to heal Gabu alone, I fear the same will not be true for those who exhibit more advanced symptoms. Moreover, the treatment's effects are limited to the soul. It offers no succor to those whose very flesh has been altered through prolonged exposure to a primal's influence. All of which is to say that we cannot save everyone. Maybe we can't, or maybe we can. No one gave us a hope of saving Gabu, and yet here we are. We must find a way to treat as many as possible. Then, the next logical step would be to produce a veritable army of porkses, would it not? Granted, it seemed a simple enough process in the first, but I suspect it will be different here in the source. Not that I am any authority, of course. Yet there is an authority on familiars to whom we may grudgingly turn. She's stubborn, haughty, eccentric, irascible, laconic, annoying. And her name is Master Matoya, the real one. I have to go now, Gabu. But the people here will look after you, all right? And I promise to come and visit you again soon. All right. Thank you, Alizé. Thank you. Nary a word from you all this time, then you bring every man and his pirogo with you. Did no one teach you any manners, girl? They were too busy teaching me etherology, Master. Jesting aside, I wanted to be the one to express our gratitude. I am told you spared no effort to sustain our bodies while we were away. And for that, we owe you our lives. Thank you. <laughs> you were gone so long. I was starting to think you'd set your heart on staying. It wasn't easy to leave, as it happens. Seldom does one have the opportunity to study other worlds, and I would not have minded extending my stay by a handful of years. Ever the scholar. Yestola dedicated herself to studying ancient civilizations of the first, befriending a tribe known as the Night Blessed in the process. There she took on the name of Matoya and won the respect of all the children of the forest. I merely adopted an alias in accordance with the custom of my hosts. 
Yours just happened to be the first name that came to mind. You mean to tell me you went gallivanting about using my name and only bothered to visit when you need a favor? And don't pretend you don't. I taught you long enough. Indeed. And devoted pupil that I am, I could not fail to recall my master's sage advice. When the answer eludes you, look to the wisdom of your elders. You there. Were you going to introduce yourself? How remiss of me. Grahatia is my name, and I am proud to call myself a scion. I too wish to offer my gratitude for your invaluable aid in sustaining the Archon's bodies, as well as my apologies. It was my inexpert summoning spell which endangered their lives in the first place. Ah, oh, yes. The one bent on digging up the mysteries of Alag. Old Galath used to speak of you. And Kryles told me all about your recent exploits. Do you have a bad back or something? At ease, boy. Whatever mess you've made, I'm not in the habit of dwelling on the failings of the younger generation. You are too kind. I've also heard much and more about you, Master Matoya. Tis an honor to finally make your acquaintance. Well, that's more than enough pleasantries for anyone. Tell me what you want. I haven't got all day. So that's the way of it. It should be a simple enough matter to make the familiar. The magic, on the other hand. Ah, that you may leave to me. Being the only one possessed of royal blood, I alone can imbue the subject with the necessary magic. So I just need to create Foxes with the power to stir the soul. Just, I say. Though we're talking about a veritable herd of the little buggers, we'd collapse before we reached double figures. But, if I could get a familiar to create the familiars, a mother porksy, as it were, Seems I haven't seen the last of that moldy old hole after all.
I stand ever ready. Victory will be ours! 